establishing the groundwork for the aspired blessings, according to Neville Goddard's teachings, offers a fascinating perspective on a biblical story. When Jesus questioned Mary during the wine scarcity at the marriage feast in Cana, saying, Woman, what concerns you and me here? John 2 verse 4, it could easily be mistaken for a dismissive remark made by a son toward his mother. Nevertheless, embedded in the intricate symbology woven throughout the Holy Scriptures, this incident carries a more profound significance. Here, Jesus embodies the person who surpasses all restrictions and confronts Mary or anybody trying to pull him back into a limited existence with the query, Woman, how does your worry pertain to us, those striving to contain me with present troubles? Subsequently, he directs the attendants to fill the containers with water, which he subsequently turns into wine using the potency inherent in a fulfilled being possessing their dreams and goals. As per the narrative, Jesus represents the unfaltering spirit untouched by bleak predictions about a crumbling world, eternally progressing towards wisdom, self-redemption, and accomplished aims. In another instance described in Mark, we witness Jesus feeling famished and seeking sustenance from a fig tree, only to discover foliage instead of fruits since it was not the right time for figs. After pronouncing that nobody would consume fruits from that tree henceforth, his followers noticed its rapid decline from the roots overnight. Mark 11 verse 20. Initially, Jesus' actions towards Mary and the fig tree might appear harsh. Yet, delving deeper reveals a crucial lesson. Vibrancy lies within us, and neglecting thoughts causes them to deteriorate to their very core. Replicating Jesus' act serves as a liberator from scarcity and illness. We must remember, woman, what concerns you and me here, whenever confronted with limitations or sickness, leading to decay and eventual demise of such negative concepts. Although portraying a person condemning a tree may seem simplistic if taken literally, viewing it via the lens of truth unfurls a profound message about consciousness shaping reality. God embodies supreme consciousness, rendering external quests for answers unnecessary. Recognizing this fact brings forth exhilaration alongside trepidation since everything originates from God or His divine consciousness. Belief in dual entities, true God and devil, contradicts the essence of monotheism, making it impossible to serve two masters effectively. As stated in Isaiah 45 verse 7, I am the Lord, and there is no other. Despite comprehending these teachings, numerous individuals persist in attributing their misfortunes to external factors. Nevertheless, suffering ultimately traces back to personal choices. If joy prevails, credit goes solely to individual efforts, given that nothing exists externally unless conceived internally first. Consciousness houses the root cause, mirrored by the outer world representing inner mental landscapes. To alter the reflection, modify the mindset accordingly. Prayer serves as a sanctuary claiming desired identities and possessions, embodying firm belief in receiving requests already granted. Mark 11 verses 24 to 26 emphasizes forgiveness releasing resentment towards others, ensuring reception without hindrances. Envisioning growth for adversaries facilitates personal advancements despite challenges posed by difficult relationships. Remember, blessings flow according to capacity to receive, reinforced by complete forgetfulness symbolizing genuine forgiveness. Persisting memories imply incomplete forgiveness, affecting the manifestation of blessings tied to absolution. Emphasizing the importance of forgiveness underscores the interconnectedness of giving and receiving enshrined in Mark 11 verses 24 to 26. Delving into the deep symbolism present in these biblical stories provides us with additional wisdom, thereby strengthening our comprehension and practical implementation of these lessons in daily life. At the marriage feast in Cana, there's more than just a demonstration of faith's capacity to manipulate one's surroundings, it also represents a reminder to tap into and activate the sacred energy residing within each of us. When Jesus converted water into wine, 
he showcased how faith combined with resolve could transform adversities into opportunities for personal development and achievement of goals. This occurrence embodies the concept of elevating the ordinary to the extraordinary, highlighting the fact that every individual holds the ability to modify their reality through awareness and convictions. Jesus' interaction with the barren fig tree carries a significant message about harmonizing our anticipations with actuality. He cursed the tree because it bore no fruit, which conveys the importance of relinquishing ideas that don't serve us well or correspond to our true intentions. Symbolically, this prompts us to examine and eliminate our own barren fig trees, referring to limiting beliefs or perceptions hindering our pursuit of objectives and dreams. Central to Goddard's teachings lies the notion that consciousness constitutes ultimate reality, encouraging individuals to take full responsibility for their encounters by recognizing the connection between internal states and external manifestations. Accepting the equation God equals consciousness grants us the power to shape our destiny, reinforcing our roles as joint creators of our experience. Resolving the paradox of serving two opposing forces, a benevolent God versus a malicious demon, is possible once we understand that the true battlefield lies within our thought processes and consciousness. In the context of forgiveness, highlighted in the book of Mark, letting go of past transgressions becomes essential for moving forward and welcoming current and future blessings. Pardoning others releases both parties from burdensome emotional baggage, including grudges and bitterness, fostering a mindset characterized by gratefulness and receptivity. Regularly practicing forgiveness ensures that our consciousness remains aligned with positive emotions, making room for abundance and happiness. A metaphorical invitation to sing a new song signifies a spiritual rebirth and a transition toward optimistic perspectives, joy, and appreciation. Engaging with divinity via uplifting spirits allows us to vibrate at frequencies associated with love and prosperity, attracting corresponding experiences and events. Rather than demanding material gifts or sacrificial rituals, the divine seeks authentic expressions of gratitude and compassion. Instead of presenting insincere tokens to a detached entity, cultivate forgiveness and trust that your requests have already been answered. Encouraged in Isaiah 42 verse 10, singing a new song implies celebrating the divine presence with enthusiasm and sincerity. A jubilant heart is the most valuable gift one can offer. Consequently, erase lingering negativity and replace it with forgiveness, allowing gratitude to flourish. Stand before the divine with a heart brimming with thanksgiving, reverberating constant praise as if your wishes have already come true. From this perspective, perceived offenses lose relevance, rendering forgiveness indispensable for completing gratitude, given that everything stems from the same source, God or His omnipresent consciousness. Understanding and accepting this truth leaves us with no choice but to extend blessings.